Let P of X and Q, I'm smiling because a fabulous question. And so let P of X and Q of X be two distinct polynomials with degree at most two. Let A0, A1, A2, A3 till AN minus 1 be distinct elements of R set of real numbers. Consider the following set X equal to I going from 0, 1, 2, 3 till N minus 1 such that that is P of AI not equal to Q of AI. P of AI not equal to Q of AI. It took me a long time to just wind my head around the question. It's a beautiful, delicious, absolutely delightful question. And so, which of the following is always correct? And so, first of all, I didn't understand this question at all. And so, I get distinct polynomials with degree at most 2. And so, I can say, hey, P of x equal to x square minus 5x plus 9. Q of x equal to x square minus 2x plus 17. And A0, A1, A2 till An minus 1 be distinct elements of R. I could have A0, A1, A2, A3, T to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 till N minus 1. From N minus 1. Let me say N is 10. I have 10 terms here, A0 to A9. X is set of elements I 0 to N minus 1 such that P of A0 not equal to Q of A0, P of A1 not equal to Q of A1. P of A2 not equal to Q of A2, P of A3 not equal to Q of A3. So suppose I've taken these two and I've taken A0, A1, A2 all the way to A9, distinct elements of R to be 0, 1, 2, 3 till 9. P of 0 not equal to Q of 0, yeah, it looks like that. P of 1 not equal to Q of 1, yeah, it looks like that. P of 2 not equal to Q of 2, it looks like that. Maybe it is, maybe it is not, but it could be. All of this from 0 to 9, whichever ones are such that they are not equal, then I will put that as x. I will count that. i 0, 1, 2, 3 till n minus 1. And such that p of a i not equal to q of a i. And so, the number of distinct elements in the set x is at least n minus 2, is less than n minus 2, is greater than n minus 2, is equal to n minus 2. And properly weird question. n minus 2 seems to play a role. 0 to n minus 1 is n elements. And first of all, I look at this and go, I have freedom to choose a1, a2, a3 till a0, a1, a2 till a9. So I can select 0, 1, 2, 3 till 9 or root 2, root 3, root 4, root 5 till whatever or cube root of 3, 7th root of 4, etc, etc, etc. I can imagine being able to select 10 elements such that for all 10 p of x p of ai not equal to q of ai suppose let's say p of 3 equal to q of 3 hypothetically then i'll dump 3 choose 11.2 if p of 11.2 equal to q of 11.2 i'll choose 13 and 7 for 13 so i can imagine because I'm given full freedom about this, being able to select 10 values such that this are distinct for everything. So I'm worried. So can I select 10 values such that they're all distinct? Possible. Okay. Suppose, so therefore, the number of distinct elements could be n. Maybe I have full freedom about selecting this. They could be n. Then I look at this and say, at least n minus 2, that seems possible, less than n minus 2, greater than n minus 2, number of distinct elements is equal to n minus 2. So n minus 2 starts playing a role and I am thinking, out of these 10, all 10 can be made to work. Can I have a scenario where only 6 work? That is. 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 work, p of 6 equal to q of 6, p of 7 equal to q of 7, p of 8 equal to q of 8, p of 9 equal to q of 9. Is that possible? I'm thinking if that is possible, then, then the number of distinct elements could be as few as 6, less than n minus 2, n minus 2 is 8. Can I have a scenario where p of x equal to q of x for 4 distinct values of x? That unlocks a range of things. I'm going to reframe this entire question by introducing a new term, R of x as P of x minus Q of x. Nice. Now, 
P of AI not equal to Q of AI can be redefined as R of AI not equal to 0. Right? P of X is this and P of X are distinct polynomials with degree at most 2. Either linear equations or quadratic equations. R of X is also going to have a degree at most 2, maximum quadratic. Because my x square term could be 5x square minus 4x square, I could have an x square term, I could have x term, I could have constant term, and I subtract this. Now, quite beautifully, r of ai not equal to 0, now comes the mind blowing part. r of x is a quadratic. So, r of x will be equal to 0 for maximum two real values. Because r of x is at most a quadratic. Is at most a quadratic. It's not more than it's not a cubic or a biquadratic or a par four or pi five. So it could have maximum of two real roots. Or I know P of AI equal to Q of AI is possible for a maximum of two values. Here I have n. All n could be distinct. Or n minus one or n minus two, but not fewer than n minus two. Or I can say the number of distinct elements in the set x is at least n minus 2. It could be n minus 2, that's where r of x has two zeros, and the two zeros happen to be uh, two real values where it goes to 0. It happens to be, say, a0 a and a3. So p of a0 will be equal to q of a0, a0 will be equal to q of a0, p of p of a3 will be q of a3. Those two won't work, the remaining will work n minus 2. r of x could have two equal real roots say a1 that means p of a1 equal to q of a1 and the only possible value is a1 in which case one cannot come everything else will come r of x could have zero real roots so technically speaking p of ai is never equal to q of ai all numbers will come so the number of elements could be n minus 2 n minus 1 or n it can never be n minus 3 there cannot be three values among this such that p of a1 is equal to q of a1, p of a2 equal to q of a2, p of a4 equal to q of a4. All three is not possible because that means a1, a2, a4, these three will be the roots of r of x, which is a quadratic equation. We know they are distinct elements of r. So we cannot, r of x, which is at most a quadratic equation, cannot have three distinct roots. The number of roots of r of x, maximum two, be two, one or zero. That means the number of distinct elements in the set X is at least n minus 2. It could be n minus 2, n minus 1, n. It cannot be fewer than n minus 2. Delightful question.